Hello and welcome RC Shim in the office, not the hangar today. Imagine having all your storage needs for massive capacity, for versatility and flexibility met in a device. Ta-da! SEMA Cube Pro. SEMA board, the company behind this, they were nice enough to send me this for review. So, this is a full disclaimer, I got this for free. But the company hasn't seen this video before I publish it, so they have no influence on my contents. You get laptop level efficiency, good performance, a lot of storage options, a lot of space in a very sleek, and small and modern looking device and a lot of versatility to play around with. But at the same time, if you just want to set this thing up, throw a bunch of drives in it and have a storage that sits in your network, it can work out of the box quite well. Few minor downsides, the cooling is noisy and shit. <laughs> but other than this, I really like this device. So I got it a week ago and I just wanted to test out everything that I could for you. So there's a ton of information that I don't want to pack directly into this video, it will get too boring. Make sure to check out the info box below, description, infos, links to my journey I had with this device. So, let's find out if this is a thing for you and don't waste any of your precious time. Thanks for tuning in. Quick overview of inch disk space. Get a lot of screws, some screwdrivers, USB-C cable and the CUT6. Cable. M2 SSD bay. Let's try the one handed install one of those here. About installing drives, these are the frames. You just four screws to mount this hard drive here. You can also screw in place a little two and a half inch SSD or conventional disc. USB A boards and a USB C in front and the headphone jack. And the power or reset button. There's these PCIe slots back there, two of them, a short and a long one. The laptop style SO DIM DDR5 RAM, system disk Kingston 256 GB NVMe SSD. This is the little NVMe 10 gigabit network card. It goes back to this. As actually, this board is the 10 gigabit. This is two times 2.5 gigabit connections to the back plane or to the front plane in this case. BIOS battery, a little Wi-Fi stick. This is the back side. Of course, it's hidden. Now uh, it's a cover that goes on this way. 230 watts maximum power. If you wanted to automatically start up upon power connect or maybe a Wi-Fi socket switch. You need to set this odd power jumper like this. So the Zima Cube has an efficient laptop CPU and a ton of space for drives down there and the 7 Spay, besides glowing in a fancy way, NVMe M2 slots, four of them, so you can have so many terabytes in there. On the back side of the NAS you have a lot of connectivity options. If you want to go even faster, like 20 gigabits, you could use the Thunderbolt connection on the back. There are two Thunderbolt 4 ports, which look like USB-C ports, but your PC needs to be compatible with Thunderbolt 4. Not every USB-C port on your PC is a Thunderbolt port. I learned this the hard way because my PC is a few years old and it doesn't understand Thunderbolt, so I could not use this super fast connection, which I thought I could. So be prepared or Research this option. If it does, it's the fastest possible way. If not, get a 10 gigabit Ethernet card for your PC and make a direct 10 gigabit connection between your PC and the NAS. If you have a switch in your home, you need to make sure that your switch also has 10 gigabit Ethernet ports, which can be a costly option. So I plan on using a direct 10 gigabit Ethernet connection between NAS and PC. On the other two network cards, they can go to the switch and serve other devices. Let's do a quick speed test from my local PC from an M2 system drive, 14 gigabyte file to the NAS using the normal copy. And it runs at using both network cards at the same time. So two times one gigabit. If you 
have two network cards in your PC and connect them to your switch and two in the NAS. You can at least have 225 speeds. Activate my 10 gigabit, copy it and look at this. We get around 820, 830 megabyte. See here, this is the 10 gig ethernet connection. We get around seven gigabits of speed. One little extra tip on the properties of your 10 gigabit card. On both ends, you wanna configure the advanced tab and increase these jumbo packets. Because if they are disabled, at least on my PC end, I don't get the full speed of 820.30, I get to 760. So at least on large files, jumbo packets can give you a 10% increase or so. These tests were from my fast system drive on the PC over 10 gig to the fast NVMe drive in the NAS, really old SATA SSD. Need to reach the SATA limit. E is 100% saturated and gets four or 500 megabyte. So here we're reaching the limit of the SSD, of the SATA SSD. With the other test, we're reaching the limit of the network card. So it comes pre-configured with SEMA OS, their own operating system or something that they took and modified a bit. It's very easy, so it's almost an Apple approach where it doesn't have a lot of options, but it works quite easy for a normal consumer. So you don't have to geek out in a Linux shell to to set up drive shares, volumes, whatnot, and even setting up RAID 5, where you have multiple drives and one can fail, even setting up RAID 5 is quite easy in the web user interface of CMOS. If you don't want to play around too much, just go with the CMOS. Mine came with 1.25, and a few days later, 1.3 was available via normal over the air update, so that was nice. But of course, I wanted to explore this more and installed actually two versions of true NAS, a free NAS software, also Linux based, but very complicated, but also very feature rich. True NAS looks nice, but in the end it was too complicated even for me. I got roughly 30 years of background in ID. And so in the end, I went the, the stupid route and installed Windows because this is just a normal PC. You could even play simple games on this thing, hook up a monitor and mouse keyboard. With Windows, it's all quite easy to set up. I just, Windows had this nasty thing that when it idled, so when I left it, the CPU usage jumped from idle three or 4% to 10 or 15% which also increased the power draw and the heat. Now it's not a problem anymore. It's just Windows. So if you go the Windows route, be prepared to have some Windows problems. And even if the NAS fails, I can take the drives out and throw them in a normal Windows PC and should be able to access my data. So no proprietary RAID controller. Hopefully it just works. I thought for monitoring, at least in the beginning, I want to use my Stream Deck because you can use HW Info, a free little software, and the Stream Deck to get your performance readouts on those buttons. They are actually animated and you see a little chart. For example, see the CPU now draws 12 watts. I configured one page with the network cards, one with the drives that I currently have in them, and then the main screen. Maybe I nerd out too much about this, but I want my system to be as power efficient as possible since this will run 24-7. Maybe you should schedule it to shut down at midnight and power up like 6 o'clock in the morning or something like this. Starts around 30 watts and goes up to like, depending on how many physical drives you have. It can be anywhere from 5 to 10 watts per drive. So if you have 6 drives, 60 watts, this thing should really go into standby. And I'm not so sure if the SEMA OS goes into standby when it should. Since I plan on going the SSD route, there it's not much of a problem. An SSD actually uses just a few milliwatts. So the downside I found with this thing here is simply the cooling. The fans in the back are too noisy. 
but they are easy to switch. Take two 80mm fans from Noctua or another brand that makes silent fans. They cost 15 to 20 bucks each fan and also replace the CPU fan. I installed a Noctua super silent fan here. I just had to unscrew the whole cooling solution because the top screws you can access but the bottoms not so easy. On the back I found a 14 cm fan, also a Noctua super silent and I made this plastic lid here. I designed this myself so you can download this if you also plan to install an ugly 14 cm. Actually I reused one of those back fans here blowing onto the motherboard CPU cooler. If you replace these three fans, cooling is not the problem anymore and it doesn't make any noise. And if you want to continue this noiseless solution, of course you have to invest more into SSD drives and not conventional drives. The price range conventional drives to SSDs is 1 to 3 approximately. So 4 terabyte SSD costs as much as 12 terabytes or 16 terabytes of conventional drives. Pros an affordable solution. Look up NAS drives with six slots and a good CPU in it and the amount of network cards and flexibility. For what I think 880 or something it's when it's reduced price for around 8 to 900 bucks this is a really good pricing. The flexibility and the options are very very good. If you buy a small NAS with only four drive base and you put in like say 8 terabyte drives and you configure RAID 5 and everything works fine. But if you run out of space, the process of migrating the data from these drives to new drives is a bit cumbersome. So it's always good to plan ahead and have more than enough drive slots because then you can just add more drive base and increase your storage space. So keep that in mind. Power efficiency, if this system is set up correctly, it is quite good, so around 30 watts. So now the question, is this thing the right choice for you? It's quite easy to answer because I think it's yes if you search for a NAS, period. <laughs> no if you are really on a tight budget because it's a, cost, it's a bit of a costly option but it's also a pro device. They also have the non-pro version which has a smaller CPU in it, an Intel N100. So it's something for the consumer because you can just use CMOS and you're fine. But it also is a viable option for pros because you can tinker around with TrueNAS, Proxmox, Unraid or Windows like lame me did. <laughs> if you watch this video like in two or three months, you can ask me in the comments how it went if I'm still on Windows. But I think I will be. I can remote desktop to it, download stuff directly there, use Plex server for example also on Windows. It's a media server that displays your videos and TV shows like in a Netflix way. It's really cool and I use it on my old NAS as well. That being said, I don't have affiliate links with them but you will find links to buy this of course. I think when I release this video they will have a deal on it. The standard price is 1100 bucks. If it's on sale, it's around eight to nine hundred bucks, which is really a good deal. Let me know in the comments what are your experiences with NAS devices. If you are a regular viewer of my channel, how do you like me reviewing these kinds of tech products? I, I really love doing all kinds of different tech, especially in the winter when it's not the season to fly so much. That all being said, thanks a lot for watching, thanks for being loyal viewers of my channel and watch all the shit that I do. Uh, it means a lot. See you next time. Bye for now.